Welcome back to the 17 News at Noon podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Noon. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us for 17 News at Noon. I'm Nicole Gitsky. We begin with a deadly incident in Oildale as a pedestrian is struck and killed by a train. It happened this morning on the train tracks by Roberts Lane and Olive Drive. Kern County Sheriff's Office confirms one person died, but they have not released any other information at this time. The pedestrian's identity will be released by the coroner's office at a later date. And police are hoping to catch the driver of a minivan that has led them on a high-speed chase twice. According to KCSO, it happened around 440 this morning. Deputies say they saw a maroon minivan that they previously pursued in the area of Gibson Street and Marriott Drive. KCSO tried to stop the vehicle, but the driver of the minivan took off. The chase continued on Highway 99, but deputies had to stop at the White Lane exit because speeds were getting dangerously high. The minivan kept going on driving erratically. If you know who the driver might be of that minivan or have any information about this case, call KCSO at 861-3110. And firefighters are looking into what caused a fire this morning in Arvin. Fire crews arrived on scene to a structure fire on Bear Mountain Avenue near North A Street. Firefighters doused the building and say the blaze did damage that building. They did not specify how much they think it will cost to rebuild or whether they suspect arson. Now the family of a woman who died after she was hit by two hit and run drivers on Panama Lane earlier this week has created a GoFundMe for funeral expenses. Herminia Orola Morales was hit by two drivers in the intersection of Panama Lane and Betty Street just before 7 p.m. on Tuesday. Police said the driver of a silver or white Mercedes sedan struck her. Then she was struck by the driver of a red Chevy Silverado. Both drivers took off. The family says Morales leaves behind her husband of 30 years, four children and five grandchildren. We have that link to the GoFundMe on our website, KGET.com. Meantime, anyone with information on this case is asked to contact Bakersfield Police at 327-7111. And we've learned the name of a person who was hit by a car and killed earlier this week in Ridgecrest. 38-year-old Franklin Lawrence Borch Jr. was struck and killed just before 6 a.m. Monday on West Bowman Road. The cause of the crash has not been released at this time. And the woman killed in a Bank of America parking lot has been identified. That incident happened just after 1115 Saturday morning in the parking lot on Oswald Street near Auburn Street. Police say a man and 56 year old Maria Carmen Hernandez Martinez was in line waiting to use the ATM when the, they were hit by the truck trying to park in the lot. Martinez was seriously hurt while the man had minor injuries. They were both taken to the hospital where Martinez later died. BPD says the driver remained at the scene and cooperated with the investigation. Neither alcohol nor drugs are believed to be a factor. And a 14 year old is dead after his off road motorcycle crashes with another bike. It happened back on January 9th in Winneka, California. Highway Patrol says 14 year old Robert David Gaynor was driving the bike when he crashed. He was rushed to a local hospital where he later died. CHP is continuing to investigate. And that's the latest on coronavirus numbers here in Kern County. Public Health reporting another deadly day as seven more people have died due to the virus. 558 people have died since March. Public Health also reported 1,149 new cases today. Now hospitalizations continue to be a growing issue. According to state data, 408 people are in the hospital. More than 83,000 people have caught the virus since the beginning of the pandemic. And a reminder that Kern Public Health also has a resource to find testing sites. On the Kern Public Health's website, there's an interactive map in both English and Spanish of where you can find your nearest paid or free testing centers. Plus, there's more information you need to know, like hours and addresses. You're encouraged to get tested even if you're not feeling sick. And the Latino COVID-19 Task Force also has a mental health and wellness hotline that you can call if you have concerns about the virus. Just call 525-5900 to talk with an expert about a variety of topics such as virtual education classrooms, employment concerns, and general worry about your or your family's safety. The hotline is confidential and is available in both English and Spanish. It's open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And if you call on a weekend, you can leave a message and the task force says someone will call you back. And as coronavirus vaccines arrive in Kern County, the pandemic's days are numbered. 
For the first time, some members of the public are lining up and lifting their sleeves for a potentially life saving shot. That process began yesterday at Omni Family Health after the clinic got word from the state that it could begin vaccinations for people 65 and older. Among hurdles like planning, some patients still fear side effects from the vaccine. This vaccine cannot give you the virus. It will give you symptoms similar to a virus because it's priming your immune system. It's helping you build up that response for when you are exposed to the virus. Dr. Tidewell says immunity kicks in about a month after that second dose. And Wednesday's announcement that those 65 and older can now get a COVID-19 vaccine means more than 100,000 people in Kern County are now eligible. Kern Public Health has a new resource for you to find where they are being administered. On their website, you can find a list of the vaccine schedule so you can see when you are eligible. Plus, they have an interactive map of providers that are offering the vaccine. If you're eligible, you can find the nearest site and call that provider to make an appointment. Well, doctors and first responders have been on the front lines in the fight against COVID-19, and now is your chance to honor that. Bakersfield Mayor Karen Goh has proclaimed today Operation White Lights Day. Yesterday, the tree at Centennial Plaza was adorned with white lights, a symbol of hope and solidarity for those who are working so hard during the pandemic. Thank you, doctors. Thank you, nurses. Thank you, those of you who are cleaning the restrooms, because all of that makes a difference. Thank you for those of you who work in the clinics, our non-clinical staff. Thank you to everyone who is involved in making our community a better place and taking care of us through this very challenging time. Throughout the month, you're encouraged to wear a white ribbon or put white lights for the Operation White Lights campaign. And in more coronavirus news, there is still an urgent need for blood donations as supply is running low. Now, Houchin says it needs all blood types. They're also asking for platelets, plasma, and COVID-19 convalescent plasma. Now the blood bank is offering an incentive. If you donate plasma, platelets, or convalescent plasma, you'll be entered into a daily drawing for a $250 gift card. They'll be offering these gift cards through the rest of the month. For more information or to make an appointment, head to hcbb.com. One local family is asking for the community's help in joining a 14-year-old's battle against cancer. Javon Compton was diagnosed with leukemia in 2019 and is in need of a stem cell transplant. That's why his family is holding a Be the Match registry event. It's happening Saturday, January 23rd at Kingdom Tax Services from 10 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. To join the registry, potential donors can text Team Chocolate Vaughn to 61474. Donors must be between the ages of 18 and 44. And Blessing Corner Ministries is holding a food distribution event this weekend for families in need. Now, the drive up event takes place Sunday, January 17th at the Blessing Corner Church located at 101 Union Avenue. The giveaway is from 2.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. The church says anyone is welcome, but you must wear a mask. And here's some news you can really sink your teeth into. The Kern County Fairgrounds will host another fair food drive through event later this month. When last year's fair was canceled, food vendors set up in the parking lot so people could get their fair food fix. Things like cinnamon rolls, lobster fries, corn dogs, and more. It was so popular that another fair food drive through event is taking place the weekends of January 22nd and the 31st from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. For more information, go to kerncountyfair.com. In our 17 Business Watch, a new Asian restaurant has opened their doors in Delano. Those hungry for crunchy, licious chicken or spaghetti with sliced hot dog can now satisfy those cravings in Kern. Jollibee, a Filipino fast food chain with dozens of locations in the state, is best known for their chicken joy. That's breaded chicken covered in a secret marinade along with their sweet jolly spaghetti. Now, according to Jollibee, it is the largest and fastest growing Asian restaurant in the world. Now, they'll be open 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. seven days a week at the Vineyards Shopping Center in Delano. Education news now. Governor Newsom yesterday released more information on the state's ongoing guidance for schools reopening, looking to work directly with schools, staff, parents, and administrations. The state has launched a new website, schools.covid19.ca.gov. Their school staff and parents can report school-specific safety concerns to government officials. 
and administrators can request help developing and implementing safety plans. This follows last month's announcement of the Safe Schools for All plan designed to get kids back into the classroom. And as students look to return to in-person classes amid the vaccine rollout, Kern High School District wants to know whether their employees are willing to get the shot. The district sent out a vaccine survey to its employees to gauge how many people will receive the coronavirus vaccine. The responses are anonymous and will assist the district in planning the vaccine rollout. According to the survey, employees who opt in will have a no cost option to receive the vaccine. And in more education news, a program involving Edwards Air Force Base distributed STEM kits yesterday to the Palmdale Aerospace Academy. The Starbase Edwards, a joint program between the Department of Defense, Edwards Air Force Base and others partnered with NASA and the Museum of Arts and History in Lancaster to create eight lessons. The Lockheed Martin Corporation donated the grant to purchase supplies for 1500 STEM kits to children in Title I schools in Palmdale and Lancaster. The kits are designed to expose children to STEM and possible careers in the field within the Antelope Valley. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Noon. The 17 News at Noon podcast is a production of KGET and Next Star Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.